It is the, almost the top of the hour. Joining us from Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania, the apparent winner of the special election in Pennsylvania's 18th Congressional District Democrat, Connor Lamb. Congratulations, uh, Connor Lamb. Good morning. Thanks for being on the show. Um, you know what they're going to call him. Thank you. Uh, Good when, he get, when, when he gets to Washington, he's going to be called Landslide Lamb. Landslide. There you go. So, <laughs> what, 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 made the, what, what do you think made the difference in this race? I think just good old-fashioned hard work. Uh, we didn't take a single vote for granted. We didn't take a single town or even inch of ground for granted. Uh, we campaigned in all of them, and I think that really paid off. If the president calls to congratulate you, which they often do in situations like this, what would you say? Uh, I guess I would say thank you. <laughs> no, it's, uh, that would be an appropriate response, I think. Uh, so uh, the district obviously went uh, Republican, uh, certainly since the turn of the century. It's a plus 20, plus 21 Republican district. What did you hear from constituents who had voted for Donald Trump but said they were going to vote for you? We even had an interview, Vaughn Hilliard interviewed mm -hmm. a Republican mayor who said he voted for Trump, he supports Trump, but he wanted to send you to Washington. What did these uh, crossover voters tell you? Well, to be honest, I never really asked anyone who they voted for in November 2016. I, I thought that was a little impolite and kind of beside the point. I mean, I was asking people for the honor of just representing them, doing the job of a representative. And the feedback that most people gave me about politics overall was that they felt like if things are too divided, they hear mm -hmm. a lot of bickering, especially from Washington, D.C., and they don't see results. So uh, what I said was, uh, I care about getting things done, and I'll do anything it takes to do that. So what else did you hear on the ground? What are the lessons for Democrats heading toward the midterms? Are there any that you can tell them? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't presume to, to give lessons to people outside the district. I think every district is pretty different. Uh, like I said, hard work really pays off. I, I think that in this environment, uh, no offense to all my friends who, who make their living on TV, uh, campaigning in real life in small rooms, door to door, person to person, uh, it works. And I learned a lot doing it. And I, I think that helped our campaign an awful lot. And I, I would advise anybody, no matter where they are, to do that. Connor, it's Willie Geis. Congratulations on your apparent win, which we're calling it here at NBC. Um, you uh, made the case on the campaign trail over the last several months that there needs to be new leadership in Washington. And you said so at the top of both parties. You said it wasn't personal toward Nancy Pelosi, but you believe it was a new day in Washington. So when you arrive in Washington, assume you do win this election, do you think Nancy Pelosi should go? Mm. Well, I don't know that we're there yet. I mean, my understanding is there wouldn't be a leadership vote this year. And uh, in this year of all years, we've got a couple more elections to go for me before we'd ever get there. However, yes, I have said and I continue to say that I think we need new leadership at the top of both parties in the House. And so I'd like to see someone besides Nancy Pelosi run, and that's who I would support. But I yeah. definitely would like to see a different leader than Paul Ryan on the other side. What is it about Nancy Pelosi specifically that you believe makes her unqualified to do the job or that at least she should go? Well, it's nothing personal. I just think that the leadership of both parties have presided over a time when we've had more and more gridlock and fewer and fewer important things getting done. And uh, I always learn that uh, responsibility starts at the top. So I think we need to sweep some new people in there. Heidi. Hi, Heidi Presbella here. You mentioned gridlock. That is one of the things that you really campaigned on was congressional gridlock, breaking congressional gridlock. So how do you see yourself working with a President Trump? What are his specific economic populist policies that you see him working on that he's advanced so far? Well, he, is, he has talked about a number of issues that are really important to the, us here in Western Pennsylvania, and I think he has shown some flexibility on uh, how he would like to approach those things. Infrastructure is probably number one there. Uh, we have a real need for it out here, just basic things like the structural efficiency of our bridges uh, is a big problem, you know, highway projects. And I think he's receptive to getting work done on those. And, and I think it's up to us to work together to, to finally get this thing done. We've been talking about it for a long time.
Hey, Connor, John Heilman, I just want to ask you this. Like, you've just been through an incredibly close race. Uh, you're headed into the weekend before this race, and the President of the United States uh, decides to come to your district and, and nationalize the race and, and bring his own particular brand of um, whatever, positive and negative, onto the ground. Just take us into that moment in your campaign. Do you think the President's uh, visit there uh, had a negative effect? Uh, did it help your opponent? Did it hurt your opponent? How do you think it played out over the course of the last uh, 72, 96 hours? of the campaign. Uh, I don't know exactly. That, that'll be up to the analysts probably to figure that one out. I, I can say that uh, I think the president is still very popular in this district. And my guess is he did energize some voters. Uh, he, I went to many polling places yesterday where there were cars and trucks outside that had a, a President Trump sticker on them. So uh, it was no secret to us all along that he's a competitor. Uh, that Rick Saccone is a competitor, and they were going to make this a real fight, and uh, we were more than willing to make it a real fight ourselves. So I wasn't surprised by by him coming here, and uh, you know I'm just really proud of my team for coming out on top. David Ignatius is in Washington and has a question. David, uh, Mr. Lamb, you appear to have won by uh, winning the the votes of uh, people who voted for Donald Trump, and I'm wondering as you head toward Washington whether you uh, are going to tell your fellow Democrats. Democrats need to do more of that across the party. Look out to Trump voters and try to find ways to speak to them. Well, I think we need to do more of that, you know, overall, like taking the president out of it. We should be working together. That is what people want. Uh, that's what they expect, and I think they, they have a right to expect that. So uh, regardless of, of who the president is or which party is in control of the White House, it's time for us to get some bills passed. You know, the basic blocking and tackling of government that we've always done, transportation and infrastructure, uh, things like Social Security and Medicare that everybody pays into, uh, I really just think we have to get those things finished and move on. Yeah. Uh, Connor, I, I know you don't know this. Willie, nobody knows this. I was actually in Congress once. What? You know that? He's that shot. It's about a brief but stint. It was a brief stint. It was, uh, yeah. But it, colorful. It was colorful, though. It was brief and uh, colorful. But, uh, you know, when I, when I uh, ran, when I first ran Connor back in the late 1800s, I was shocked <laughs> that after knocking on three or four doors, and I knocked on about 10,000 doors in that campaign, but after about knocking on three or four or five doors in Northwest Florida, I knew what was on the mind of most of the people in that district because I'd hear the same thing over and over again. I'm wondering, since you ran a, a grassroots campaign, uh, I'm wondering when you were knocking on doors, when you were visiting people in their living rooms across southwest Pennsylvania, what were you hearing? What were the themes that, that people kept bringing up? What were their biggest concerns? Well, it, it probably took me more than three or four doors, Joe, and I'm guessing that you won by more than I did, so you're probably better at this than me. But no, no, uh, no. what I heard overall was <laughs> I just kept hearing over and over again, work together, work with the other side, do what you say you're going to do. Just really basic things, the kind of things I learned from my dad and my grandfather, to be honest with you. So uh, I think that, that people basically want us to just do the job of, of representing, and uh, they don't want us to shut down the government. They don't want us to posture or bicker. Uh, they want us to, to figure these things out. All right. Connor Lamb, uh, congratulations. We'll say again on your apparent victory, uh, but it certainly is looking good for you. Uh, no, it was a tough fight. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.